So doing further testing with these uh, sick fits, basically trying to figure out the best way to drive them. There's a few obvious things, you know, for one, you want to have the layout uh, necessities, which would be low inductance, trying to have, you know, flat opposing planes and things like that. Very, very short gate driver leads if you're going to use a gate driver like this. So typically with these, the gate resistance is going to be a lot lower than your SIs. The high rate of change of current, the high DVDT, is going to cause some unwanted, let's just say unwanted high voltage peaks that you might not see uh, with a regular fed, you know. Slowing that a little bit with your normal gate resistor, you know, but not slowing it too much, obviously, uh, is definitely going to help. But from what I can tell, probably the best way to really also help get rid of that ringing is to use some type of uh, bead, some EMI filter bead uh, in line with the gate drive. Something like that is actually a lot harder in practice because it, you know, it's it's not like it'd be real easy to just sort of uh, calculate a proper bead. If you use a the wrong type of bead, you know, if it's got more of an inductive element to it, then obviously it's going to just cause even more ringing. You got a lot of things to consider there. So currently, I don't have any of that. I don't have any EMI suppression. Um, it's really just that 3.3 ohm gate resistor. So I got to be real careful with the switching. Basically see like if you look at it on the scope, there's a point that you reach in the off cycle where you have this gate ringing. Depending on how you have it switching, you know, the amplitude is going to be more or less. Uh, but what you really don't want is that amplitude to be so high that it starts cutting the FET back on. Because uh, then you're going to have problems, might kill the FET like that. Otherwise, too much high frequency ringing, you really don't want that anyway. So these are things to consider. I'm trying to just test this and tune this to a way where I don't run into that problem. Um, currently, here goes a lower frequency coil. And this little one I was using before. This is closer to the two megahertz range. Running about 2.4 megahertz or so. Slow rise time on the gate drive. I've got this tuned with a very low coupling. It's actually sitting a little bit below the bottom of L2. Basically, with that coupling, I try to tune this in a little bit. Whereas with another setup, I had a pretty high coupling, and I could tune for fairly decent output at the really low voltages. If I try to do that with something like this, then um, it's going to start pulling up over what the supply can take. But if I tune it like this, then um, I can take higher advantage of that maximum drain voltage if you need you know higher input voltage and whatnot so if i tune that around to get it going so that's how it's switching you know i got like 50 volts on the drain and about that tuning i say it's probably closer to normal about how i normally would tune these or how they would look so i'm just going to keep raising it let's put it at 30 and uh readjust it so right there right there is about pretty good for 30 so now this is what we're looking like so the ringing is increasing but still tolerable uh, the gate drive could be better but I'm just going to turn it up to about 40 volts so that's how it's switching it's about 40 volts and pulling you know, about 105 watts or so. Yeah, let's see if I can tune it a little more. Yeah, so not a bad little feel off that guy. So pull loads. Da -da -da -da. Let's see. I can only go up to 50, so I can go ahead and bring it to 50. That's 50. Tune it a little better. So about 140 watts. Um, the ringing is still manageable here. It's not causing me too many problems. I can load it right and everything's still fine. Pull some little hot arts. On the lower end of the couplings is what I'm getting according to my input voltage. So the point is, 
you know, I might start getting to a point where once I get so high in voltage that ringing starts to, you know, reach well over what it is now. It starts to reach over 5 volts or so. Once it starts getting to the point to cut that fit back on, you got problems. Um, if I tune this around at this voltage, I can probably find regions where it does start to get out of control. So, that's with no type of EMI suppression on the gate drive, uh, which going to be difficult to add but I probably need to to uh, run this the best among other things uh, but again this is just how I ended up tuning with that particular coupling the input voltage the shunt cap you know the primary uh, it's just how that works that's pretty cool just sort of get an idea of how that works so let's just say <clears throat> another thing uh, cut that off I already know this this fit right here has absolutely no heat on it. I can take my finger after running it like that and put it on there and it has developed absolutely no appreciable, let's just say no noticeable warmth whatsoever. All right, so now I've just very slightly raised the coupling. Uh, it's still below the bottom of L2, but I've just, just barely nudged it up, right? Um, so now I'm gonna run it with that setting. And what that's basically done is, um, it's, you know, upped my input current, but it's also changed the tuning around slightly to where I might be right on the edge of still being able to get away with it. So you see at this voltage with the best, with the highest output looking like, like dead on resonance, that's what the switching looks like. So that's not something that's going to improve uh, until I start loading it like this. So I'm pulling the arc, it kind of improves that a little bit. Uh, so I still kind of have to get that a little off kilter, let's say. I'm going to put it like right there. And as I keep going, slightly more concerned about the ringing now. So the idea again is, you know, maybe that will improve as I keep going up in voltage. I'm going to keep going up a little bit. I'm going to try to tune it to where I don't get crazy uh, gate ringing. So for about 40, I'll just do about 43 volts. So now at 43 volts, about 150 watts. It holds a little bit more power. Lost the Class E, um, but it's probably still not really heating that MOSFET up. So just the slightest little change there, um, it's improved it a little bit. You know, it's made it so I need less voltage to get the same output. So just pulling a little arc, like 60 or so watts. Just kind of, it's getting detuned. But again, that's just the way I've got the frequency set on it. Um, I'm not really sure if I could go too much higher. Put about 46. Turn it a little bit. So that's getting pretty close to about as high as I'd want to bring it. Just this dirty setup. Um, but it's that fed is very impressive. It's allowing me to run this, and if I wanted to, I could bump that heat sink down to way smaller. Again, uh, while that's running, that's the uh, gate drive consumption. That's pretty damn well. Gate driver doesn't struggle to drive that fit too hard. And that might be pretty good for uh, playing audio. So that was sort of the point, trying to get something that would have a decent bush that I could play audio from. I'll try to. So that's about 200 watts now. It really doesn't want to. So just an example of what I was just talking about. I just did something real stupid where I wasn't paying attention and I reached my arm over to adjust the voltage and I was bringing it, you know, about as high as I'd ever brought it, trying to just sort of see if I could nudge the uh, voltage up without that gate ringing getting out of control. <laughs> I think basically what happened was, yeah, I brought my arm so close 
I just happened to bring it into a tuning where that gate ringing uh, just got a little too high. And I wasn't actually looking at the scope at the time. I think I was, you know, like looking at my phone or something. And uh, probably what happened was some type of like thermal runaway on the gate where it just started ringing real bad. And all of a sudden it just got so bad, boom, thing died. Unfortunately, that was a, a really nice uh, MOSFET. You know, may, hopefully I'll be able to get another one uh, sometime in the future. But this one right here is the only other one I had. So this is fairly similar, but it's a 1200 volt fit. And it's got uh, twice the on resistance. So... Hopefully that'll still work all right and I won't make the same uh, stupid mistake, but you know, it's literally what I was trying to avoid and I just kept, you know, going a little higher and eventually it just couldn't take it. So again, that's not something that I would probably have a problem with with a regular MOSFET. This, the sick fit, you know, these things are, they're just too fast and um, it doesn't look like they can really tolerate the same type of ringing that, you know, regular SI fits could. That's just what it seems like. Seems like you can avalanche the crap out of regular FETs, a lot of them, and they'll tolerate it. Uh, this guy right here is probably like the third one of these I've killed. The other two were real cheap. It was just first time playing with them, just accidental foolish killing. And this one was more like a, you know, just a pure accident. Uh, but it still happened. So, again, you're only, <laughs> it's probably only going to be so beneficial trying to drive one of these to any you know reasonable extent on a layout like this without really taking into consideration what you need to do when driving these it's just going to kill them